This is the Winning Cures Everything Guide to Gambling on Football. If you already know what you're doing when you gamble on football, this is not for you. We're you, you, you can just you move can, on. You're you, good. You can, uh, you can watch, and if there's things that you don't know about gambling on football, like different terms, different, uh, different ways to bet, then you might want to be... You might want to check in. If you know and we miss some stuff, put it on the bottom. <laughs> this, put it on the comments. Yeah, put it in the comments. This is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier place to gamble on sports, period. Go down there. They've got six different sports books. Those places are fantastic. Gold Strike, Samstown, Horseshoe. Uh, I mean, all Hollywood. Of them. Hollywood, yeah. Yep. And and the Fitz is going to have uh, – they're going to have one. Mm. Uh, resorts. Don't think Fitz no, no, the Fitz one. is. I, I've already talked to him about it. Oh, have you? Fitz yet? is going to have one. It's oh. not open yet, but it, but they will, they will have one. Um, let's start off with this. The money line. Okay. Let's talk about the money line. Betting on the money line is the easiest way to gamble on football. All you're doing is picking a winner. There's going to be a number out beside the team that you want to bet on, and it will be plus whatever. So or minus whatever. Yeah. Last year, Oregon State played Colorado State. This is just an example. Uh, Colorado State was the favorite. They were minus 185. That means, and this is just for beginners, to win 100 bucks, you have to put down 185 bucks. And so if you wanted Colorado State in that game, you had to bet $185 to win 100. On the other side, though, Oregon State was plus 165. That means you put down $100. If Oregon State won that ball game, you would win $165. So you put down 100, you win 165 if there's a plus. If there's a minus, you're going the opposite direction. So it's all percentage based, right? Um it's the easiest way to do it. If you want to do and we'll get into parlays and everything else, but it's like It's very dangerous betting heavy favorites. Yes, very very dangerous because there's not a lot of return on investment, right? So Moneyline is the easiest way to gamble if you just want to get a little action in. Now we can move on to the point spread. It, tell me, like, which do you prefer, point spread or money line? Oh, I'm always a spread guy. That's Same here. Same well, here. no, that's not true. If I like the dog, I'm, I mean, it just depends on the odds. I can't say a, I prefer one or the other. If I think the dog is going to win, I'm not, I'm not taking points. I want the, I want the money. Yeah, I because the it, obviously the odds are better. But that's because direction. I am a gambler, and I don't care about the security. Correct. Like, there's a safety net with taking dogs and points, which we'll get into. The The point spread works a lot like the money line, only there are points involved, right? So, la- we'll, we'll stick to this Oregon State-Colorado uh, State game from last year. Because that was a great game to use as an example. Yes. Everyone cares about it. <laughs> well, it's easier to keep people focused on the number. Uh, Colorado State was a four-point favorite. That means the number out beside them was minus four. What you need is for Colorado State to win by more than four points. 25 to 20 ball game, Colorado State covers. Yes. Um, If Oregon State loses the game 31 to 28, they only lose by three, then Colorado State does not cover. Now, if you wanted Oregon State, you need them to to lose or win. If You can win with a point spread or the other way around. Like, if they only lost 31-28, Oregon State would cover the spread. You got to get it within that little spot. Now, if they lost like thirty-one to twenty-seven, that is what is called a push. You get your money back, and nothing else. That's it. You just it, there. There's no play on it because it just landed right on the number. So, if you are really looking to either win or lose, you're going to look for the half points, right? So, like four and a half, something like that, where it's either got to be five or four. There ain't no half point in football. Period. Um, well, so that's let me and let me go back to the money line just so you understand. In the NFL, there are ties. If you bet the Patriots to beat the Browns and they tie, yeah. you lose that bet because yes. you bet them to win, not win or tie. Exactly. So it's it's a lot different in the NFL. Because there can be a tie. Because there can in be a tie. College football there can't be a tie, so you don't have to worry about it. On the point spread, generally the juice the odds, the VIG, whatever you want to call it, it will generally be minus 110. Now, that will change at every different sports book. No matter, like, whatever the game is, you will find different odds at different places. If, if everybody is betting, and the reason they move it, it starts out at 110. Yes. Okay, that's just a starting point. 
if everybody bets in this scenario, Colorado State, heavily, but they don't want to move the number from minus four to minus four and a half or minus five, they will move the VIG. Yes. So if it was minus 110, you could bet Colorado State at minus four on minus 110. So it would be you put $110 down to 100. Now, the other way around is if they want, if there was a lot of money coming in, on Colorado State, on Colorado it went State. to minus 125. It could go to minus 125. Now, that would mean you get better odds on Oregon State. Correct. Now, it may not be the exact same movement. No, the percentage goes in the house favor. Yes, it will always be in the house favor. But you are looking for the best odds for what you believe is going to happen. Uh, let's go on and jump into the over-under. The point total. There is a point total at the at the end of this line, right? Excuse me. The point total in Colorado State and Oregon State last year was 58 and a half. So you needed the point total to go over 58 and a half if you wanted that one or under. One way one way or the other. 58 or 59, it's going to completely shift the game. So if the game ends 31 to 27, that goes under. So 31 to 27 would be 58 total points. 31 to 28, that is 59 total points. That goes over. It's it's fun if you don't really know who's going to win the ball game, if you don't have any real feel. And, again, the, the odds on this are normally minus 110. It's generally going to be 10% to the house every time. So minus 110 will be what you're looking at. Now, obviously, those will change the same as point spread odds and whatnot. But if you feel like there's going to be a lot of points scored, you think it's going to go over a certain point, but you don't know who's going to win. It could just be whoever gets the ball last. That's the way you want to play. Am I right on that? Yeah. No, that's right. Okay. Betting overs is always more fun than betting unders because high-scoring games are more fun than low-scoring games. Doesn't but when you've got gonna win. like in the Big 12, oh, yeah. you're, you're going to have some really high overs. Kind of gets fun though. It does get fun because I have, it, I have bet triple digit overs before, and I have nearly pooped myself just waiting on the <laughs> waiting on the last touchdown to come in, and sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, it and doesn't. that's what makes it interesting, right? Because the fun thing about gambling on football is no matter what, like you can bet on a thirty eight point spread, and you watch for the entire game to make sure that the underdog doesn't score like a garbage touchdown that's going to kill your your favorite, right? So that's what you're doing. Uh, let's move on to futures and props, all right? There are all sorts of different things that you can bet on, and it, it depends on the sports book as to which one is going to have different props, different futures, all that kind of stuff. A certain prop bet would be like Heisman Trophy odds. For the 2018 season, Tua Tonga-Vailoa is the Heisman Trophy favorite at 4-1. to one. There are so many different players that will be available on the Heisman odds before the season. And these Heisman odds continue all the way up until the Heisman Trophy presentation early in December. You can bet on them at any time. They will change all throughout the season. Uh, last year, before the season started, Sam Darnold was the favorite at plus 380. Saquon Barkley, you could have gotten him at plus 1,200. The better odds are at Saquon Barkley. Like, obviously, neither of those guys won. <laughs> I don't even know what Baker Mayfield's were. We, did, we didn't look at it before the season. No, we didn't, didn't think he was going to be a candidate. Didn't think he would win. No. Uh, but that's the fun thing about it. Like, you just you never know what's going to happen. So, props are just basically fun bets. It's just fun, right? Yeah. Futures. Let's jump into future bets. Uh, last year, before the season, Florida State, it, they, and it depends on the sports book as to what futures are going to be available, but a lot of them will have teams to make the four-team playoff or teams to win the national championship, teams to win their division, all that kind of stuff. So if you look back at a bunch of our videos on YouTube, they will all explain uh, what the odds were like for the NFC East That's and right. all the all the NFL divisions. It was like the Patriots were minus 850. It's crazy. Yeah, minus 850 or something like that to win their division. That means you bet $850 to win 100 bucks. Yes. Like, obviously the odds are not in your favor at that point. But 
that seems like a pretty sure bet. So if you if you just TB, want a little extra, TB twelve goes down. That uh, that can get expensive. that whole thing will will blow up in your face. Um, so last year, for example, Florida State to make the four team playoff, they were plus one forty to make the playoff. So you put down a hundred dollars, you would win back one hundred and forty bucks. Obviously, that'll change if you're just betting five, ten bucks, whatever. That's right. Ten bucks would win you uh, fourteen dollars. You know, whatever. It, it, the percentage, yeah, it, it's the, all the same. They use one hundred because it's a hundred percent, a hundred dollars. It makes it's the easier math to look easy. At. Yeah, makes the math much easier. Uh, but there's all sorts of different stuff. There's odds to win the national title. Last year, Northwestern, their odds to win the national title were plus twenty five thousand, which makes sense. Notre Dame's were plus thirty eight hundred. Ohio State though, plus four fifty. So, before the season starts, you're going to get pluses on everybody because there's 130 teams. Correct. Now, there's only... Seven that can actually win it. Yeah, we will, I'll, I'll go with a bigger number. Let's say 20. Just there are 20, 20 teams that can win the there's national championship. There's not 20 that are actually win. going to win the national championship. But you can put money on whoever... You can put money on Memphis to win the national championship if you wanted to. Dang right. Put money on They'll Ole Miss. They'll go undefeated and get left out. That's, that's the way it goes. And so, it, you might not want to do that, but you can if you want to. Uh, the other future bet is regular season win totals. Now, in all of our preview videos on our channel, we talk about the over-under for them, and that is their season win total. For example, Utah this year from the Pac-12 South, their over-under this year is 7. Now, if you hit right on the 7, you're going to push. Their odds for over-under 7 was minus 145 to go over and plus 130 to go under. Obviously, it's different odds, which is... You look at it, and you're like, why would it not be the same thing? That's well, a 10%. It's yes. usually going to be 10% different. But, but it will be... It will change, depending on which way you're going. If Vegas likes one more than the other, they will change their percentage. So, plus... Yeah, like true. Minus 145 to go over, but then plus 130 to go under, which means if you go under, you're not going to get paid as much as, as the other way around, right? Um... So, like, odds to win the national title, or, sorry, regular yeah. season win total. Go ahead. I, and this for NFL and for college, it's only regular season. Your championship game, your yep. bowl game, any postseason any playoff games count. do not count. It is only out of a 12-game schedule in college, and in the pros, it's only in a 16-game schedule. So, for uh, Utah, they're over under being seven. Like, obviously, you're going to want, if you really want to win or lose, you're going to want somebody that has a half point. And a lot of places you can buy a half point. Like, it's just up in the air. Get a little, get a little complicated, but yeah. it's called buying the hook. Buying the hook. And we'll, we'll get to those here momentarily. But you go over the seven, you're going to get your minus 145. So, 145 bucks to win 100. You go under, it depends on the, which way you bet. But either way, uh, let's jump out of that. Let's talk about parlays for just a second. Easiest way to lose money, really fun way to gamble. Really fun way to gamble because really fun way the to gamble. odds are way up there. Uh, the odds, and I only know it for like two team parlays, it's like 2.6 to 1. Yeah. Those are the odds. Two and a half to 1. But obviously the odds will vary depending on what teams you bet. So if you're just betting money lines, say you bet like two favorites that are both like minus 800 or minus 1,000 to win, it's it's going to pay out better than it would for like the minus eight hundred to win. There are there are money line parlay calculators that you can just Google on your phone. Yes, and it will you just put in what the odds are. You're picking three teams. This one is plus eight fifty. This one is plus two fifty. This one is plus you know one eighty five. It's gonna it's gonna calculate if all three of those teams win what your payout should be. Yes, yes. Those and things are readily available all over the internet. Just All a over quick the Google place. search, you can find it. Like for example, um, we should probably link to that on our website. If we, we, can find we could a probably Google do that. that. We like not that we know any of these companies or support them, but if there's one that works, we should at least put the link there. First week last season, before the 2017 season, uh, say you were putting five bucks down on Oregon State plus four, five bucks on uh, UMass minus one and a half against whoever they were playing, and South Florida minus twenty two against whoever they were playing. I think of San Jose State. Uh, 15 bucks down, you are going to win back a total, if all three hit, $13.66. Now, the whole bet, like each each bet is individual. So say you win two and lose another one, 
you're still going to win some money. On a parlay, it is a little bit different because you need all three of those to hit. So if you have a parlay of all those same ones, one fifteen dollar bet one, instead of well, three. It, even a five dollar bet. Okay. So say it's just because you were betting five bucks on each one before. Okay, that's right. Gotcha. Say you just put that one five dollars down on all three teams. Your odds go up to where you would win back twenty nine dollars and eighty four cents. The difference is you have to have all three hit. You can't have two out of three hit. You can't have two and then a push. If you have two wins and a push, they're just going to give you $5 back. That's it. But you have two and a loss? One loss destroys the entire bet. You need all three to hit for you to be able to cash in on that. So you have to be careful with parlays. They are fun, but they are dangerous. Don't be putting no mortgage down on a parlay. You like do what you want. I'm do, not a money advisor. Do whatever you want. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Uh, there's a website called DonBest.com. Uh, they have a sports betting terminology guide. And we'll go through some of the terms that you are going to hear in ga- uh, gambling on football. Uh, one is against the spread. Uh, this is a method of referring to the result of the event that takes the point spread into account. So We talked about betting the spread. The, the point spread. So they didn't just win the game, they won the spread. Or they lost the game, but they covered it against the spread. Exactly. Uh, bad beat. That is a, a wager that loses unexpectedly. So say you lose on like a Hail Mary or a fumble. Like, okay, uh, people that bet on UCLA had a, a bad beat against Stanford last year, I guess, where there was a fumble at the end of the game. Stanford was up 13-9. to UCLA was a five-point underdog, so they were covering. Stanford, with three seconds left, returns a fumble for a touchdown. That's a bad beat. Because you did not expect to lose that. You thought you had that game. Uh, the book. We talk about sports books. That is the book. They are the, the people that hold it. Uh, it's an establishment that accepts bets on the outcome of sporting events. Bookmaker or bookie. Same thing. The person that actually works at, or works at the book. Uh, the cover. Uh, that's to beat the point spread by the required number of points. When you win, you have covered the spread. The dog. That's short for underdog. That is... The person or the the non favorite. Yeah, is that the best team way to put that? Not pick to win. The favorite, obviously, the team picked to win. Futures, we just talked about those bets placed on an event or outcome uh, taking place in the future. Handicapper, uh, handicapping, either one. It's the attempt to predict the outcome. So, like that's handicapping is gambling. You're predicting the future. Hedging a bet, that's betting on both sides of a bet. So, say the line moves at some point. Say you've perfect example. Notre Dame, Michigan this year. Michigan opened up as a seven-point underdog, and then over the span of a month, they were then a three-point favorite. If you liked it to fall somewhere in the middle, you can hedge the bet. You could have bet Michigan at plus seven and now bet Notre Dame at plus three. And if Notre Dame loses by one, if the game is anywhere between a two to one or two-point game, either way, you, you win both those games. Yes. So it's it's weird. Another way to hedge bets, which I love to do, is if you get yourself in a three, four, five team parlay and you've won all of them and the last game is yet to kick off and you need it to go one way and you win, you know, plus 900, plus 2,000, plus something crazy because it's a big parlay. Yeah. Then you can just bet a little bit on the other team and it doesn't matter the outcome. It's called hedging. If you're a true gambler, you don't do it. But uh, if you're but just if, trying, for if fun, you're trying to save some money and, and take a little pressure off of you, you can win either way. Yeah, that way you're good either way. Uh, the hook we already talked about that. That's the half. That's point. the half point. Uh, laying the points. That's betting the favorite by giving up points. So when you lay points, you're betting the favorite. Uh, lines. That's another word for odds. We've already talked about that. Line maker. Uh, there's people at these different sports books that make the lines. Not every sports book is the same. So you're going to get different lines at different places. A lot of them will be very similar though. Uh, lock, that's an easy winner. We're going to talk about our locks of the week and all that kind of mess. Uh, none, of, none of them are easy. Money line, we already talked about that. It's a wager where no point spread is involved. It's just who wins. The over-under, we talked about that. Parlay, we talked about that. Pick em. Uh A game where neither team is favored. A pick em is basically a zero line. It is just you pick the winner. So in, in pick ems, you can pick, like you can do that or you can go with money. Like Normally they won't have a money line. 
on that. It's just a pick them. Uh, point spread, we talked about prop bet. Taking the points. Taking the points is different than laying the points. Right? Ooh, yeah, taking the, the opposite. Points, you are taking, the taking points. So, like, right now, Notre Dame is a three-point underdog to Michigan. You're taking three points. And we talked about underdog, which was dog. So there is still way more that we could go into, but this is a, a pretty reasonable guide for how to gamble on football and go down to Tunica and put your bets in on football this year. Seem pretty good? Yeah, man. You can read up more at winningcureseverything.com. The article is there, so if you're better at reading this and not listening to it, look it Check up. Check it out. Check it out. 